In this next section, I'm going to tell you about the gram-positive and gram-negative cell wall. So starting with gram-positive, remember gram-positive bacteria will stain purple with the gram stain. Some examples of pathogens that are gram-positive are Staphylococcus aureus, uh, which we all do carry this on our normal flora, but also there are pathogenic strains of this, like you guys have might have heard of MRSA, um, which is a methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, Bacillus anthracis, this causes anthrax, Clostridium difficile, and Streptococcus mutans, which actually causes dental cavity. So here is what the gram-positive cell wall looks like. I'm going to do a drawing here. So first of all, we have our regular cell membrane. This is our plasma membrane. And remember, this is a phospholipid bilayer. And facing the inside here, we have the lipid tails. And on the outside here, these little round things, these are the phosphate heads. And just to remind you, the purpose of this cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer, is to serve as a barrier to block things from freely entering or exiting the cell. So it um, is permeable only to specific things, semi-permeable is what we would call it, okay, allowing only certain things to pass in and out. Next, outside of this phospholipid bilayer, so here's the inside of the cell, just to be clear. Inside and up here, this will be the outside. Okay, so next, we have a very, very thin space. This is actually a gel-like material, which we call the periplasm. In gram-positive bacteria, just to remind you, this is, this is gram-positive, this space is very thin. Okay, not thick at all, very thin. And there may be a few proteins um, inside of it, just very few, okay? So maybe some proteins inside of there. On the outside of, the very outside of the cell wall, here's where we have that peptidoglycan that we did in the last video. So we have many, many, many layers of it in gram positive. This is a thick peptidoglycan. When I say thick, I mean this is about 30 to 40 layers of those glycan chains, very thick. The last thing that we have in gram-positive bacteria, these chains here that I'm going to put inside, these are called tachoic acids, and there's also um, a second type. These are called the lipotachoic acids, and the tachoic acids and the lipotachoic acids, they're going to help stabilize this really thick peptidoglycan. Okay, so overall, pretty picture per usual. We have, again, the inside, the cell membrane is here, followed by a very thin periplasm. And remember, this holds a few proteins inside of it. And then here we have this very thick peptidoglycan, and these little red uh, rope-like things are the tachoic acids and the lipotachoic acids, which are unique to gram-positive bacteria. And once again, the best way to learn this is by drawing it. It helps you to memorize it, okay? All right, now let's talk about the gram-negative cell wall. So some examples of gram-negative bacteria, E. coli, Salmonella typhi. You guys have heard of Salmonella, I'm sure, from eating uh, raw chicken. Neisseria gonorrhea. This is, causes a sexually transmitted disease. And Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is a uh, common hospital-acquired infection. Um, it usually only affects immunocompromised individuals. Now, the gram-negative is a little bit more complicated. So again, here we have the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer. So we're talking about gram-negative now. Okay, so phospholipid bilayer. Again, this is the inside of the cell. After the phospholipid bilayer, we're going to have a periplasm. But this periplasm is very thick, so a thick periplasm. And again, the periplasm is a gel, a gel-like material, and there's a lot of really important little proteins embedded within it. And these proteins have a lot of important functions. The next thing we're going to have, within the periplasm, inside of it, that's where we're going to find the peptidoglycan. Okay, so the peptidoglycan, p -glycan, is inside the periplasm, but it's very thin. 
Okay, maybe like two to three layers of it. Then the last thing, this is very, this is so different. Gram-negative bacteria actually have a second membrane. An outer membrane is what we're going to call it. So really, this one down here, this was an inner membrane, and this one's the outer membrane. But what's unique about the outer membrane? Again, it's a bilayer, but the first layer is going to be phospholipid. The second layer is this special material. Okay, I'm going to draw, it looks like a squiggly line right now, called a lipopolysaccharide. And I'm going to abbreviate this LPS. So the LPS is in the outside of the outer membrane. So remember, lipo, this is a lipid. So the lipid part faces the inside. And the polysaccharide, this is a hydrophilic sugar, and that faces the outside. So LPS is unique to gram-negative bacteria, and we're going to talk about this a lot in, in other lectures, so make sure you remember LPS is unique to gram-negative bacteria, and it's in the outer membrane. Pretty picture here. We have the inner membrane down here. It's a regular phospholipid bilayer. Next, this big purple chunk here, that's the periplasm. And within the periplasm right here, that's where you'll find a thin peptidoglycan. Then on the outside, okay, we have the outer membrane, OM outer membrane. The first layer here are those phospholipids. And then this stuff on the outside here, Remember, that's LPS, lipopolysaccharide. So remember on the left here, hopefully you can tell this one is the gram-positive cell, and this one on the right is the gram-negative. And I always like to draw a nice little chart to help me remember the key differences. So first, starting with gram-positive, remember gram-positive have these unique little red uh, ropes here. I think they look like ropes. And remember, these are the tachoic acids and the lipotechoic acid. Remember, gram-negative bacteria do not have the tachoic acid or lipotechoic acid. So that's difference number one. I should number it. Difference number two. Remember, gram-positive have a very thick peptidoglycan layer. Gram-negative, it's so tiny, very thin. A third difference. Remember, gram-negative bacteria have this huge periplasm, whereas gram-positive it's so small. And remember, the periplasm is a gel-like space with a lot of proteins inside of it. A fourth difference, going to look at the picture here. Remember, gram-negative bacteria have an extra outer membrane composed of LPS. And in gram-positive, there's no outer membrane. There's only that one regular cell membrane. Now, one other uh, difference, remember from the first video when we were talking about the structure here of the peptidoglycan, remember gram-positives have that extra amino acid cross-bridge, amino acid cross-bridge in the peptidoglycan. And in gram-negative, there's no cross-bridge. It's just a direct linkage. The last thing I want to mention are a couple of exceptions, these weird oddballs. The first are called acid fast bacteria. These bacteria have very waxy cell walls. They're waxy because they contain a material called mycolic acid. So therefore, these bacteria do not gram stain accurately. So instead, we'll do what's called the acid fast stain. All right, and this is important medically because, for example, anything in the mycobacterium are acid fast. Mycobacterium cause a couple of important diseases such as tuberculosis and also leprosy. Uh, so as you see later in the semester, uh, we would typically do an acid fast stain for this uh, genre of bacteria. The second oddballs are a genre called mycoplasma. Mycoplasma actually have no cell wall, which is very, very odd meaning they have no peptidoglycan. Okay, they're like the one weirdo oddball bacteria that don't have peptidoglycan. Because they have no cell wall, they typically have no defined shape. So we call them pleomorphic. Pleomorphic means many shapes, many different shapes, no defined shape. And you'll see later in the semester, 
Mycoplasma also cause some illnesses such as um, a form of pneumonia. Okay, so these are also medically significant. Sometimes it might be hard to diagnose a mycoplasma infection because they have no cell wall, the gram stain will not work on them. Okay, they have no, they're not gram positive or gram negative.